To most, Franklin, Kentucky appears to be a typical Southern town. But beneath this facade lies a dark mystery. In 1948, it was here that 25-year-old fighter pilot, Captain Thomas Mantell, made headlines around the world after he died chasing a UFO in the skies above Franklin, Kentucky. For over 70 years, his tragic plane crash has left the community clamoring for answers, including Mantell's grandsons, Eric and Terry Mantell. Hi, guys. Hey, how you doing? Rich Emberlin. Eric Mantell, nice to meet you. Hello, it's Terry an Mantell. honor to meet both of y'all. Rich believes they can help him understand how far the military will go to continually hide the truth about UFOs from the public. Some of the medals here are just absolutely amazing. Wow. For a guy that's, how old was he, 25? 25. 25. He already had two presidential unit citations. This is a major award, the Distinguished Flying Cross, for someone that's 25 years old, already has all that. That guy's legit, and he was going places. A competent pilot, hero. It just solidifies who he was as a pilot, as a person who had two kids and a wife that he was madly in love with, and he still put his life on the line, whatever happened that day. On January 7th, 1948, control tower operators at Godman Army Airfield in Fort Knox, Kentucky, receive a report of an unidentified flying object hovering over the base. There was a bunch of calls all over the state of Kentucky that was flooding into the police department. We see something, it's huge, it's metallic. What is it? Controllers immediately radioed the Kentucky Air National Guard. Captain Thomas Mantell, who is leading a flight of four P-51 aircraft, is sent to investigate. Within minutes, Mantell and his wingmen close in on the mysterious object. He reported that it was shiny, metallic, tremendous in size, uh, reported seeing observation windows. But then, Mantell gives an astonishing order to one of the pilots in his formation. Return to base and arm your plane with hot guns. The military term which means prepare to fire. So that's what I always thought was really interesting because for me it's almost like the smoking gun of this whole case. They knew what was going on, they knew it was a serious matter, and they just wouldn't do hot guns for no reason. The reason he's requesting hot guns is he feels threatened and he's a seasoned guy. He's not gonna ask for that unless he needs it. While the other plane prepares for intergalactic battle, Mantell climbs higher and higher in pursuit of the UFO. So he chased this thing and around 20,000 feet, they lost contact. That's where the mystery kind of starts. Captain Mantell's plane is last seen as it hurtles to the ground, crash landing in a field in Franklin, Kentucky. The same town where, ironically, he was born just 25 years earlier. One of the last people to see the plane was local resident Doyle Burnett, doing, who was Good. just seven years old when the P-51 aircraft tragically fell from the sky. I heard an explosion, and we looked up, and we saw a plane coming down, and one wing flew off of the plane and went across the field from us. Doyle's wife, Patsy, also witnessed the crash. This is the house you grew up at? Yes, this is where I grew up. And this is where you were at? when the plane came yes, down? Yes. How old were you? I was four years old. Really? But I remember, remember it well. I don't think you could forget that. No, you can't. No. Uh, the uh, noise when it hit the roof, it was just, uh, it was worse than a hailstorm. Within hours, the horrific crash attracted onlookers from around the area, while the press blurted out news of a military plane crashing while chasing a UFO. Did the military ever show up? Oh, yes. They came to our house, and uh, they woke us up in the middle of the night. And it was a very cold night. Well, my mother asked the military officers uh, what made the plane crash. And their standard answer was he flew too high and ran out of oxygen. 
There have been many attempts to explain what caused Captain Mantell's plane to crash. No official reports mention anything about a UFO. And this opens more questions than answers. A report came out afterwards saying that after was, this one? Yes, yes. A military one? Military report, yes, sir, that he was perhaps chasing Venus. Then another report came out saying that he was perhaps chasing a, a weather balloon. So that Venus stuff is, is ridiculous. He sees weather balloons all the time, too. They're always launching them on near bases. They do it in the morning for, before planes take off. This is a piece of your grandfather's plane they recovered from the crash scene. This is amazing. It's, this is very emotional for me. It has to be. How, how can it? It's emotional for me, and I didn't know the man. While Captain Mantell will forever be immortalized in Franklin, Kentucky history, now, his grandsons finally have the opportunity to pay homage to his great sacrifice. Franklin resident Joe Phillips has offered to take Eric and Terry to the crash site where their grandfather, a true American hero, lost his life chasing a UFO. We're basically right in front of it, right there. But when it hit, and shook the ground, people that come around to see something like that. It was a terrible day. There's so many emotions going through through my mind, really, right now. To know we're standing right here on the ground uh, it means a lot, uh, not only to Eric and myself, but our whole family. His plane, his PF-51, was sitting right where we're standing, which is it's amazing. I just wonder you know, what he was thinking. You know, if he came to. Here's someone, Thomas Mantell, served at D-Day, lives through that, and then dies years later in peacetime over the continental United States chasing a UFO in a situation where the government says there's no such thing. And yet you've got to live with this. You've got to deal with the fact that this happened in your family, your grandfather. I wish I could assuage your loss, but there's just no words for that. Take your time. I don't know how people deal with that. I don't know how they get their closure, but I hope they do. Let's say a prayer. Uh, dear God, thank you for this day. We do know that Tommy and his mother and his wife are together right now, and that's the faith that we have, and that's what carries us on. And um, we love you. Jesus and I pray. Amen. <laughs>